Hi, I'm Randy McLean, the president of Waypoint Analytics, and Brent Grover, the president of Evergreen Hello, Consulting, Randy. is with us. Um, uh, Brent, you and I have been working together for uh, quite a number of years and have worked in a lot of accounts uh, that we have in common. We have common clients, which is great. Our stuff is so complimentary. And what I wanted to talk to you, um, uh, Brent, today uh, about was um, you know, big data. And I'm kind of excited and appalled by what's going on with, with the, quote, big data. And uh, Brent runs into this all the time in, in his accounts and his work, and I just wanted to um, ask uh, a few of the questions and see if you're seeing the same kinds of things that we are. Sure. Now, to start off, um, you know, when I'm talking about big data, so we're all in the play, play, uh, playing field, everybody's heard of this. And what's interesting is big data used to mean stuff that was out somewhere else in big companies or big resources. Uh, but with the uh, sophistication of computers now, everybody can have their own big data if they save enough information about what they do. And uh, in a world where it is not only a good idea, but necessary for, for survival for a company to get sophisticated in their approach to the market, uh, they have to understand their numbers better, they have to have a deeper understanding, they have to add new numbers and new metrics of what they're doing. Uh, big data starts to have a whole new meaning and a very important one. Yeah. So what are you seeing in the market as people are sort of struggling to uh, figure out what to do with this whole concept? It's, it's certainly a hot topic. And everybody wants to buy a solution to that challenge, check the box, yeah. because uh, big data is something that CEOs have to address and CFOs. Uh, what I see people doing in distribution is purchasing either uh, a, a module on their ERP system that's a BI tool, a business intelligence tool, to drill down deeper into the data mm -hmm. and to make graphs and diagrams and all that. Or they'll buy a third-party product or a service like Cognos, uh, MITS, and Focus, to put them in alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that is not enough because to me, that information, it's, it's wonderful to have the, uh, have the facts, but how do you turn that into actionable, uh, actionable knowledge? Uh, somebody told me that uh, the difference between knowledge and wisdom is that it's good, it's good to know that a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. Yeah. So uh, what do you do with all this information, including line item profit analytics as you use at Waypoint? And I feel to, to apply the information, whether it's for customer profitability analytics or pricing analytics, you need software analytical tools and experience that are specific to the problem you're trying to solve rather than uh, a number cruncher. Yeah, I agree with that. And of course, uh, that's where we make our living. Uh, we provide uh, uh, probably the best analytical tool for profitability. And we started where everybody else did, where we thought we would allow people to see their own information in new and interesting ways. Uh, but we very soon discovered that people really need profit information and cost information. And so uh, we integrated all those things in so people could see where they make money, not just where they have margin. And they can see where it costs them more to, to deliver a service, not just that they have expenses. And so, um, and we put that together in a package that gives a lot of insight into the market. And that ha actually gives us the ability to see the results of what you do when you do pricing and other strategy programs in the accounts uh, that we share in common, we can see right. the before and after the profitability. You know, I'm a recovering accountant, right? So yes. I, I've always looked at things uh, from an analytical vantage point, including when I was in the distribution business back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I became, uh, through the uh, auspices of a, a consulting firm called A.T. Kearney and Associates, um, they had done a big program for American Hospital Supply Company many years ago. It's been Baxter, and now it's uh, Cardinal Healthcare. But this, this huge client, um, of, of the consultant uh, got customer profitability informa information as a distributor for the first time. How did they do it? Well, A.T. Kearney had a 360 IBM system. Wow. This is, you know, nobody had, nobody distribution had anything quite like that at the time. Nonetheless, um, the, the, the awareness of customer profitability and, and measuring profit of customers on a net basis, the awareness was there, but nobody did anything with it. And, and we, in our, in our paper packaging and sanitary supplies business, we did a lot because we had an accountant, that would be me, mm -hmm. who was there and been trying to be very profit focused and figuring out where were we making money, 
This is long before Jonathan Burns told the world that 40% of your customers are unprofitable by any measure. Yeah, and he's you an know? optimist and because anybody right. gets that high is... I don't disagree. Yeah. But back in the 80s, you know, we found the same thing, but we couldn't do too much with the spreadsheet. Then we had to key all the data in ourselves. And I think until Waypoint came along, nobody fully automated the d data gathering and analytical process. And it is... Uh, customer profitability knowledge and is, is integral to the pricing recommendations that we make uh, giving distributors strategic pricing advice. You, we need to understand if a customer's profitable or not, but also why is that? Uh, exactly. are, they, are they selling below market price? Are they, are, is it an order size problem? Mm -hmm. Because order size is a profound predictor of profitability. Yes. And is it a cost to serve issue, which often for, for distribution customers, it really varies widely in three specific areas. I refer to them as the three gets. Mm -hmm. The cost of getting the order, the cost of getting the order to the customer, and the cost of getting paid. Right. And that varies a lot from customer to customer. So, of course. you know, we always say all profit dollars aren't created equal because it, it costs more to generate some profit dollars than others. When I say that, I mean gross profit dollars. Well, that's uh, one of the things that uh, makes us very excited when uh, you come into one of our accounts. Uh, because we provide the knowledge part of it, you help them convert that to wisdom and action uh, that will change the nature of uh, their performance. And so um, they get an opportunity to bring somebody in that will take, take the job on, make sure it gets done, uh, doesn't have other things that are distracting uh, them from the, uh, from the end point, and you're there to get it and deliver it, be focused on it, and uh, they reduce their risk of failure uh, to get a program that works. Uh, substantially by having somebody w doing the work. But, you know, if Waypoint Analytics and Evergreen Consulting brought our best efforts to some people in the business, whether it's CFOs or CEOs, you know, because it's all between the ears ultimately, yeah. there are some folks out there who do not yet accept the fact that it's not good to have unprofitable customers. They, they think that somehow you mash it all together, the profitable customers and the unprofitable customers, and you can't do anything about those unprofitable customers, but you somehow you need them, and it can't be fixed, so that's just the way it is. I, th I think I would, I would uh, uh, put it another way. I, th I know that certainly back in my career, I went through the exercise that most of us have, you know, what's a good sale? And the CFO will tell you, well, we need a 22 margin, anything above that will be fine. And then you put all kinds of policies in practice to make sure everything's above that. And the logical conclusion is that each sale is, because it's above that threshold, is adding something to the bottom line. But in reality, each sale has its own cost to serve envelope. And sometimes it's much, much higher than the gross profit on the sale, so they're adding yeah. losses. And, and that envelope yeah. consists of fixed expenses and variable expenses. Yeah. Now, in the long run, all expenses are variable. Mm -hmm. But there are many who treat all expenses as though they're fixed. So they say, well, OK, uh, so I'm wasting a lot of time on that truck route, but the driver's not doing anything anyway. Right. So I would then say, well, what kind of a manager are you if your drivers aren't doing anything? Well, he's anyway? not accounting for opportunity costs. You know, if he's not doing anything, how much money would you have made if he was? And if he was doing something that was productive? Or um, I, would, I had a, a great discussion with somebody the other day. Um, a sales VP was adamant. He says, you know, I'm trying to get people to add one more thing onto the order, and this is a good thing. And, and it's no big deal because he just goes to the next rack over and grabs one more thing and puts it on the order. All the time that person's grabbing that one thing over, uh, next rack over to put a $5 um, item on the order, $5 gross profit on the order to make, uh, and adds $14 of cost is driving the sale underwater. And they're, and they're not freeing up the time so he could put a $1,000 item on another order. And so right. they're really uh, missing the game there. And that's, uh, that's a big deal. And one last thing I would add is sort of an insult to injury situation mm -hmm. where a, a company has got a, a distributor's got a $75 operating cost for their warehouse orders mm -hmm. before sales commissions. And even though they know it's $75, they willingly pay the salespeople a commission on an order that, order that only generates $50 of gross margin or mm -hmm. 25 or three. They, they're out of pocket losing money on the order, yeah. and yet they pay a behavioral reward incentive to the salesperson for bringing in that order. Yeah, it creates a moral hazard right in the business. you know. And then, of course, when you try and stop them from doing it, they're screaming to high heaven, why won't you let me lose your money anymore? Because I want to make a commission. Right. Yeah, so that, that, that's a big deal. So I think um, uh, one of the takeaways from, uh, from this discussion 
is that people do need to recognize that customer profitability matters. They do need to get information on customer profitability. And it's not just because it's bad uh, from a profit standpoint. It's because if you don't have it, there's absolutely nothing you can do to fix it. Right. If you don't know where you're losing money, how are you going to stop losing money in the places where you are? Then? And that's contributing to your, uh, to, uh, to your performance issues. Right. Oh, Jim Collins calls that confronting the brutal facts. Yeah, there you go. Right. Well, thanks for your wisdom My on that. Pleasure. I appreciate Remember, it very much. Don't put tomatoes in your fruit salad. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for joining us on this. I hope that part of this discussion is something that will help formulate your thought processes and that as you're looking forward, you'll start to think a lot more about customer profitability and uh, where that comes from, how to measure it, monitor, and do something about it. Because where that is done, companies perform at profit rates much, much, much higher than their associations, their industries, and their own histories. So thank you very much, and we'll see you in future videos.